Hello, Global Gardeners. Today I'm in San Diego at an amazing series of gardens. This was the very first botanic garden I visited many, many years ago, and I'm glad to be back. So join me today as we visit the San Diego Botanic Garden. Hi, I'm Gardner Scott, and San Diego, California is one of the locations in the United States that has wonderful weather year round. So they can grow plants here that don't do well in regions like my Colorado, where we get severe winters. Here, plants grow with pretty constant temperatures, not a lot of variation and not a lot of weather differences. And so as I think of gardens and botanic gardens with year-round interest, San Diego always comes to mind. Today I'm fortunate enough to be here while they're having a bromeliad exhibit. The bromeliad exhibit is incredible, an entire building filled with bromeliads from all over the world. And these unique plants are the kind that some gardeners might have one or two in their house, but to see a whole building is just fascinating. Like most big city botanic gardens, San Diego has meandering paths, lots of trees for shade, and of course, lots of benches for sitting. Here's a native plant garden with the plants all having a tone of blues and grays. As moderate as the climate is here in San Diego, they don't get a lot of rain. And so many of the garden areas are made up of native plants and what many of us would call desert plants. It's easy to get lost in a big botanic garden, but in San Diego, they actually put arrows on the pathways to help guide you in a recommended journey. While many of the paths are paved, there are offshoots of dirt paths to venture into the plants. In designing garden areas, Repeating certain anchor plants really adds a nice continuity. In this section of the Botanic Garden, there are different types of aloe plants that are really quite stunning and stand apart from a lot of the native bushes and shrubs on the hillside. Something else you'll see in botanic gardens that you can repeat in your own garden is to match the climate that you have with some other part of the world. Now, this is generally a Mediterranean climate here in San Diego, but the poor soil and the low rainfall matches some areas of South Africa. So this section of the garden is made up of South African plants. That allows all gardeners to grow things from all over the world by just matching the plants to our specific gardens. Here's a South African plant that I love growing in my garden. 
ice plant. Most of the garden is made up of level pathways, but there are some areas that allow you to venture up the hill into some more secluded and some more beautiful gardens. A major city botanic garden can be overwhelming with all the different gardens and the thousands of plants. And it's common to just walk through because you're just overwhelmed and you really don't absorb much. So I suggest just taking some time, sitting in one of the many benches that all botanic gardens have, especially near a water feature, to enjoy the insects, the sounds, the plants, and just absorb all that the garden has to offer. And as you explore some of the offshoot paths, you might discover some really nice, shady, secluded benches to take a rest. This warm climate and some extra irrigation allows San Diego to copy a tropical rainforest. Here's a very interesting design component. All these plants are about the same height, similar foliage, though slightly different, but made up of many different colors. At the top of the gardens is a tower that enables you to get a 360 degree view of the surrounding area, some of the native plants, and you can view out and overlook the Pacific Ocean. There's an area of the garden dedicated to Australian plants as well, like these eucalyptus trees, one of the world's tallest trees that can grow up to 300 feet tall. As I walk through the garden, I notice that very few of the plants are in bloom, and there are very few of the sections planted with just flowers. And so, a plant like this that is blooming almost looks out of place because the garden is so beautiful without flowers. All the colors, all the variation of size and shape really makes for a beautiful garden, even without flowers. I like seeing areas like this in a major botanic garden, basically just giving ideas that you can recreate in your home garden to include how to set up some rock borders, plants like these succulents, taking an old bench and turning it into a bed of succulents, 
and then having basically the same types of plants but different heights, colors, and shapes of the foliage. I love seeing the herb garden because this is easily replicated in most of our gardens. A nice stone border, there's chives, there's thyme, there's sage, there's rosemary. There are a lot of the plants that I'm currently growing. And so when I see a garden like this with a pathway leading in from all four directions and quadrants of herbs, it gives me ideas for my own design. I love focal points in the garden and nice garden art. And this is one of the things I remember from my last visit are these sculptures made up of succulents to highlight this woman's dress and the man's suit. It's fun to walk through a small orchard of banana trees, especially when you find out that the banana really isn't a tree. It's an herb or a herb, and it's the largest herb in the world and beautiful as a garden. And this area of California can grow avocado trees. As well as olives and figs and nectarines and pomegranates and limes and lemons. Lots of trees I would love to have in an orchard in my backyard but would never survive my cold winters. There's a beautiful bamboo garden here, and you might know that giant pandas primarily eat bamboo. Well, at the San Diego Zoo where they have pandas, they'll come here to harvest some of the bamboo to feed those bears. I love wind chimes in the garden, in addition to them being a beautiful sound and a focal point. Can't imagine having a wind chime like this. There's very little wind today, but I'd love to hear what this sounds like when it actually starts swaying in a good breeze. This is a beautiful garden bed with some great design components. The foliage is different sizes, different colors, flowers of blue, flowers of fuchsia. There's even a daisy thrown in. And what looks to be a sedum with beautiful foliage that makes it look like a flower in its own right. I've been here about two hours now and I've seen most of the garden. So I'm on the back side starting to work my way towards the exit. So I figure I probably have about another hour. So three hours in a beautiful garden like this 
and I've seen so much, so many beautiful plants and ideas that I hope to incorporate in my own garden. The San Diego Botanic Garden. It should be on your list of gardens to visit. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening. Mm -hmm.